Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Amos. Alas for those who are at ease in Zion, and for those who feel secure on Mount Samaria. Alas for those who lie on beds of ivory, and lounge on their couches, and eat lambs from the flock and calves from the stall, who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp, and, like David, improvise on instruments of music who drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oils, but are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore, they shall now be the first to go into exile, and the revelry of the loungers shall pass away. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to Timothy. Of course, there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment, for we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into the temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses, in the presence of God who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession. I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous, and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that is really life. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. 
In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Most of us are familiar with the story of the rich man and Lazarus. One reason I think it's so memorable is because of the glaring contrast between the two characters, both in terms of their lifestyles and their respective outcomes in the afterlife as described in the story. It's easy from our vantage point to sympathize with the plight of poor Lazarus who has spent his life in abject poverty and neglect. And by the same token, it's easy to demonize the rich man who lives a life of luxury and ease and who barely seems to notice what is happening with the poor man lying at his gate. Again and again in his teaching and preaching, Jesus expresses an abiding preferential concern for the poor. And in many of his parables, the driving point is also that the wealthy find it hard, if not impossible, to live a truly faithful life. It wasn't so many weeks ago that we heard the story of the rich young ruler, remember? who went away very sad because he was unable to do what Jesus told him to do, to sell what he had and give to the poor. So how could we not take sides in such a story as this? It all seems so patently unfair and unnecessary. Why, for example, couldn't this man who was not just rich but filthy rich 
take a penance to help his suffering neighbor lying right before his eyes. Yet as far as our sympathies are concerned, we may too quickly assume that we or or most of us are not part of the truly rich in our society. So we may feel justified in our own situations and free to look down on those who jealously cling to their much more substantial fortunes. However, if we look at our status in terms of the entirety of the global population, even those of us with very modest means stand out in a way as rich by comparison. I ran across a study done some years ago that used an imaginary global population of 100 people to see how wealth is divided on that scale. And it was an eye-opening revelation. For example, if you and I have food in the refrigerator, clothes on our back, a roof overhead, and a place to sleep, we are more comfortable than 75% of the people in this world. If we have money in the bank, in our wallet, our purse, our spare change at the end of the day in a drawer, we are among the top 8% of the world's wealthiest people. Even if this is a generalization, by comparison, I think it's true that few, if any, of us here today would be considered to be among the less fortunate much less among the truly poor of this world. I think for us, the great chasm that is spoken of in this story is not between us and Father Abraham. Indeed, I don't think it really has to do so much with the afterlife, but everything to do with this life, our life here and now. Bishop Jonathan, Bishop-elect Jonathan, spoke eloquently yesterday at the Diocesan Council, talking about right here in the Diocese of South Dakota, the numbers of people who are living in what could practically be called third world conditions. I think the great chasm for most of us is, how can we possibly do all that needs to be done in a global society where by comparison so very many, even some in our own communities, are desperate for the basics of life, food, clothing, and shelter. When it comes to seeking practical solutions about this, I think the enormity of it all can be paralyzing for us. Where do we start? What do we do? What can I as one person offer here that will be of any real effect? In that regard, I have a suggestion or two for us to consider. Some of you may remember back in the 1990s, the Episcopal Church proclaimed a decade of evangelism. It was intended to stir the wider church to take action on many fronts, and one of the leaders of that effort was a priest named Wayne Schwab, who was named the first ever evangelism officer for the Episcopal Church. He and others produced a wealth of resources and training opportunities that are still bearing much fruit and that led to much revitalization and even some substantial growth in many of our congregations over the years of his tenure and since. After his retirement, Wayne continued to offer assistance and resources in this ministry especially through what I think is his often overlooked but very important book entitled, When the Members Are the Missionaries. When the Members Are the Missionaries. And his companion website, membermission.org. The message of that book and of his work is deceptively simple and yet so profound. 
He says, each and every one of us is called to make life more loving and just. And the way we do it is to embrace the opportunities and challenges of what he calls our Monday through Saturday living in these six arenas. Our homes, which include family members and close friends. Number two, our places of work, which include school and volunteer work. Number three, our local communities, which include our neighborhood, town, and our city. Number four, the wider world, which includes society, culture, economics, and government in county, state, nation, and world. Number five, our leisure, which includes recreation and play. And finally, and obviously, number six, in the church, which includes our spiritual, physical, and emotional health, as well as our share in church life and involvement in the congregation, diocese, and wider church. Here at Emmanuel, there are many, many who are engaged in this last arena, especially through our various outreach ministries. Yet every one of us here today have connections with every one of these six arenas of life. And our individual action in each of these areas can help undergird the wider efforts of our parish ministries. And in this way, every baptized person can be engaged directly in meaningful work and Christian witness. These efforts join with parish and community-wide networks of cooperation. And in turn, those also become a supporting part of wider political, social, and governmental programs that enable more systemic change and deep social progress. It's in these simple human connections, in these six basic arenas of our everyday life where it all begins. How much more might we in this congregation be able to accomplish together if each and every one of us committed ourselves to make life more loving and just by our daily actions in these six areas, consciously and thoughtfully, every day, Monday through Saturday. Anyone of almost any age can do this in some way or another. And the needs, let's call them opportunities for service and ministry, the needs are right in front of us and all around us. We might even say that Lazarus and Jesus are waiting at our gates. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God the Father, God from God. Light from light, true God from true God, be God not made, 
Form 3, found on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of the word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our words may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May they also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. As you have prayed in recent months for the election of a new bishop, and those prayers have borne fruit, let us also join in a prayer for the calling of Emmanuel's 11th rector. Lord God, Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
If you are planning to go, the second part of that, if you are planning to go to, actually it's a little different place I think, on the bottom of page 13, if you are planning, and I hope many of you will plan to go to Pier for the, for the ordination consecration of the new bishop, it will be a festive and joyous occasion. There will be many people there from far and near, but if you are planning to go, you need to let Nanette know so that she can let the diocese know by this Tuesday, October 1st. So even if you're not sure, let her know that you think you're coming so they can begin to think ahead about making sure they've got plenty of space for everyone who may be present. It will be at the high school in the auditorium, not at any of the churches in Pier. There should be plenty of room for parking and, of course, for seating. But I hope that many of you will be able to join us for that very festive and, and, and important time. At this time, I will invite any who may be seeking prayers for birthdays, anniversaries, travel, or healing to come forward here to, to the altar rail. God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send, therefore, your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And on this special occasion for each of you, I lay hands on and anoint you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve this your servant who will travel to inter the ashes of his father, surround him with your loving care, protect him from every danger, and bring him in safety to his journey's end, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And I anoint you in safety and in mourning in the name of Christ. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Healing. Lord, pour out your Spirit upon this, your servant, that she may be healed and brought to that fullness of life which is yours alone to give. 
laying their hands on you in our you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, beseeching him to uphold you and to fill you with his grace, that you may know the healing power of his love now and forever. Amen. Beseeching him to uphold you and fill you with his grace, that you may know the healing power of his love now and always. I believe someone is celebrating a birthday. He's 81. 81. Yes. God bless you. Will you join with me in the birthday prayer for our friend Joe here? Watch over thy child, O Lord, as his days increase. Bless and guide him wherever he may be. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise him up if he falls, and in his heart may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of his life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I anoint you with oil in celebration of the anniversary of your birth, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts. Happy anniversary. Thank you. 
understand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Therefore, for you are the source of light and life, you made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but to deliver us from Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.